I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And before we get into the video, as always, a massive thank you and a shout out to my Patreon supporters, James Welch, Fuzel CC, Basic Terror, Zan, Retro Galaxy, Fanban, Mashinsky, Jet Simon, Olivier Bernier, Myra Lewis, Endmark Games, Matt and Seth Coble for supporting my game dev journey. If you want to see what's on offer in the Patreons, there's a link in the description. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Castlevania tutorial series. Um, I've been a little busier while I've been off camera because... Partly, I don't want to make an episode full of pixel art, so I've gone ahead and just redesigned the floor blocks. If I double click into them, this is effectively what they look like. Feel free to pause it if you want to just replicate it exactly as I've done, but I've just added some texture and some highlights. That way, when we play the game, it looks a little more fitting. I've also added a little bit of texture to the candles, so I've added more shading at the bottom and the base of the candle. Again, feel free to touch yours up however you like. Um, I've made these yellow um, stair collision uh, zones here invisible, and I've added in a stair block. And all I've done is I've called this step front. Well, step, because I was playing around with front and back, but I've just got one. This is what it is. It's just a sprite. If I double click, it's one, two, three, four pixels high by 16 pixels wide. And I've just created a kind of 3D look with the kind of face of the step here and then the side of the step here. So when I stack them, they kind of look like a staircase. And then if I walk up the staircase, he kind of looks like he's walking up those steps, which is kind of what I want. Feel free to design yours however you like. Um, it's entirely up to you. All you will need to do is make sure you place the first one at the foot of the collision trigger that prompts the character to go up the stairs and make sure that they're overlapping the collision boundary of the sprite that triggers the stairs. So it's like he's walking up them. Um, as long as you stick to those basic rules, then you are good to go. Now, there is one thing we need to address in this episode, which I'll show you, which is if we push up when we're walking from the left to the right, he goes up the stairs as intended, which is fine. If we do it the other way, he goes into that stair climbing mode, which is what we don't want. And the same thing over here, he goes into that stair stepping mode. What, uh, what I don't want to happen in the game is if we're attacking monsters, say, coming this way and we try and jump, he just it doesn't jump. It just goes straight into the kind of stare animation. So we need to detect which way the character's facing when we collide with these collision boxes. I'm just going to move that one over to that one a bit more. Um, because if we collide with them and we're facing the wrong way, I don't want the character to go into the animation um, the animation of climbing the stairs, if that makes sense. So what we need to do is we need to click on the stair stopper. Now, if you remember, we've got two of these. We've got the bottom ones, which are the stair stoppers, and we've got the top ones, which are stair stopper two. With the bottom ones, we're going to need to give these an ID. So we're going to click instance variable, and we're going to add a new instance variable, and I'm just going to call it ID. And I'm going to make that a string. So the left hand one here, the ID, I'm just going to call it L, which will be for left, just in the lower case. And then the right hand one, I'm going to call the ID R. Now we've got these again over here. This one is L because it's on the left hand side of the stairs. And we don't have one for the right. So now let's go back into the player events. Now, if we come to the stairs group here, what we've got is when the player base is overlapping the stair stopper, if W is down, set stairs to true. Now, I only want that to be the case if another condition is true. And if that condition is that we are colliding with the stair stopper to the left and we're facing right. 
So let's go ahead and add those in. So let's just select the block and push B on the keyboard to get a sub event. Double click. Now we can go into stair stopper and we can compare the instance variable ID. And let's just type in L in the value. So now we're saying if we're overlapping the stair stopper and W is down, if the stair stopper ID is L. Now we need another condition because we need to know if the player is facing right or left. So if we push C on the keyboard, we can go into the player sprite and then we can go is mirrored. Now we've designed him facing to the right. If we mirror him, he faces to the left. So I'm going to say if not mirrored, then set on stairs to true. Now, if we play this, we can go up the stairs as normal, but if we're going the other way now, we can't. And that's absolutely brilliant. The only thing is, it's not going up the stairs, but it's also not jumping. So we can fix that now as well. So if we go back into player controls. So what I think the solution is, is to create a new jumping block here. And let's just make it specific to which stair stopper we're overlapping. So let's say, in fact, let's get rid of on W press. Let's just say if player base is overlapping the stair stopper, and then we're going to create the sub event. And we're going to say if the stair stopper, and we're going to say, compare the instance variable ID is equal to L, which is left. And then we're going to say C on the keyboard to create a condition. And we're going to say player is mirrored. So he is facing to the left. So we're overlapping the stair stopper. It's the left one. We're facing left. And then be on the keyboard for another sub event. Double click. And we're going to go keyboard on key pressed W. And then we can say simulate jump. There. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, there is no way we can push up and accidentally go onto the stairs facing the other way, which is perfect. Now, let's go ahead and do that for the other side. So back down here in the stairs block, we're going to click on the player base is overlapping stair stopper. And we're going to hit B on the keyboard. And now I'm going to just click in and hold down control and drag out a copy and double click and change L to R. And again, I'm going to copy the player is mirrored. I'm going to drag it in and nest it just underneath inside that same block. But this time I'm going to invert that because we want to know if the player is not mirrored. Or I mean is mirrored. And then I'm going to copy and drag that down by holding control. So effectively, it's the opposite of what we've just said. Good. So we can't go up the stairs now by pushing the W key as we're walking to the right. But again, we've got that problem where we can't jump. So let's go back up, select the whole thing, push B on the keyboard. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy down, hold down control. And I'm going to copy that down and drag it underneath. I'm going to invert that. I'm going to push B on the keyboard to get a sub event. I'm going to drag down on W pressed, and then I'm going to drag down on jump. And it's not working for some reason. It's because we need to change the ID to R. Don't be so hasty when copying and pasting things. There we go. Now we can jump when we're facing the opposite direction and we can go up the stairs just fine. And that's fixed that little problem there. So now the stairs should work just fine by themselves. Okay, in the next episode, we're gonna add in the ax. So the secondary, the second secondary weapon, if I bring him back to the start there, we're gonna add in the ability to switch uh, between these weapons based on what we pick up. So we'll have to add in a new pickup and then whatever we pick up, if the dagger falls or if the axe falls, it will just switch out whatever secondary weapon we have. And then the attack, the secondary attack button will then trigger the secondary weapon. That's all coming up in the next episode. Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far and I'll see you in the next episode.